26-year-old Dinellan woman and injured a 21-year-old Ocala woman. A 27-year-old Ocala man died from injuries suffered in a hit-and-run accident early Saturday morning at the Leesburg Mall parking lot. And Disney's shareholders were treated to updates on a slew of projects during the annual shareholding meeting in Houston last week, including a look at construction of the highly anticipated Star Wars Galaxy's Edge Land at Disneyland and Disney World. And that is your news brief from The Source. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. See, boating is no accident. This Monday, some rain and a thunderstorm during the morning hours, and clouds will break for some sun Monday afternoon. It'll become breezy with a high in the upper 60s to mid-70s. Breezy early Monday night, then clearing and much colder. Lows in the mid to upper 30s inland, mid-40s along the coast. Tuesday, partly sunny and cool with a high 65 to 69. Wednesday, mostly sunny, high 64 to 68. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. Hey, this is Matt Wilkerson from Verizon. You work all day, right? So why would you want to spend your night out shopping for that new phone? Well, Marion County, let me and Verizon help you out. I can deliver to your home or office, saving you precious time. Phone, tablets, internet, home phones, even accessories. Whatever you need, we will deliver free of charge. Call me at the store, 352-528-0020. That's 528-0020. With a graduate degree in management and leadership from Webster University, there'll never be a better time for you to explore what's next in your career. Classes are scheduled so you can continue your normal workday routine. And the accelerated program means a new term starts about every 10 weeks. If you're looking to gain a broad general management and leadership perspective, then Webster University's management and leadership degree program is the right one for you. It's all a part of what's next at Webster University. Go to webster.edu slash manage. Accredited by ACBSP. Five minutes after 8 o'clock. I don't know if it's raining where you are. It looks like it wants to rain here. The weather channel map thingy, you know, the thing you can push to show the future. Mm-hmm. I love that thing. Show the future. It shows rain definitely coming our way. So you're probably getting some rain somewhere out there. Not here at the mall yet, I don't think. I'm not sure. It doesn't look like it. Um, however, it looks like it'll all be here and gone by uh, noon today. And that will be followed by some cooler temperatures. Nice. Which is exactly what Galen Unold prayed for. So we're going to thank him for that. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> Galen Unold from Life South. Good morning, Galen. Hey, good morning, Larry, Robin. And I can tell you it is raining on I 75. Is it really? How hard? So, uh, it's just sprinkling. It's not bad at all. Yeah, this rain is ushering in some cold temperatures, and I, I know that you said prayers yesterday in church to ask for this, so thank you. <laughs> yeah, low of 38 or something like that. Something like, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's spring break. Yeah. Why is spring break always so cold? This is why we go on cruises on spring break. <laughs> so we go south, we go to the Caribbean, and uh, we again, we stay home and... Uh, Yesterday was beautiful, wasn't it? It was just it was. beautiful. It was really beautiful. It was and then gorgeous. my wife's like, well, maybe, she's like, maybe we can, uh, you know, go to the beach next week. And I said, no, it's going to be like in the 30s. <laughs> plus, it's, plus it's bike week, right? So Yeah, it, oh. it's fun. You got to go. So what happened? You didn't go on a cruise oh, this year? It's bike week. I mean, it's just, I, I bought a house. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. That, that does <laughs> change, oh, that's right. That does change things a little bit, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Hey, you yeah. live. You know, you live in one of the most popular destinations in the entire world. So you really are in a destination. So just just take advantage of it. Absolutely. <laughs> we don't... I was going to go to the beach. You can't do anything in this weather in Florida. You can't do maybe Disney. But guess what? It's spring break, so that every other yacht. Uh, that's, that's a problem. Yeah, yeah, I hear what you're saying. Yeah, nice, ridiculous. nice temperature, but those lines. I, I, I'm ah, the lines are the big issue for me. Mm-hmm. I don't want to stand in a line for a long time. This is one of the worst times of the year. I, I think you can like. There's a website where you can track how busy Disney World is, and this is like one of the worst times of the year. Is it really? Oh, oh yeah. Well, it's usually yeah. February and October are the two good times to go right. because the children are yeah. in school and it's good. You just right. walk right in. No, anytime there's no holiday is the time to go to Disney. Yeah, don't don't go on no. New Year's yeah, Eve day. Brutal. Oh no, don't I go. I mean, really, what do you, <laughs> where do you where do you go in Florida besides Disney World when the weather's like this, or or any of the theme parks? Let's just say. 
Well, I mean, I did. Okay. The, it's great about the, Florida, which is the beaches. Well, okay. Now, I, I don't know if you are going to realize this, but I grew up on the south shore of Long Island. And in the winter, right. there was no, and those beaches are beautiful in the summer. There was nobody there in the winter. And I used to love, it was eight miles away. And I used to love going there in the winter, just walking on the beach. And oh, me too. I live by Lake Michigan. So, That's where we go. So that would be my answer to the question. What would You could go to the beach. You just wouldn't be there swimming and, and wearing bathing suits and stuff mm-hmm. like that. You just join. They should, they should, I don't know. The, the, there used to be people fishing, just guys like casting lines into sure. the surf, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sure. Well, I understand that, and I've done that. It's just not, it's not ideal. It's not even good. So, I'd rather go watch the leaves change. I think. No, <laughs> <laughs> no you wouldn't. No, you are adamant. You, uh, hey, my problem is if good. Well, I was going to tell you there was a cat saves family from a fire story this morning. <laughs> I no, there was. I not. swear to you. Okay. <laughs> You know, and, and I was thinking about the beach thing, and then we'll close it. You know, if you go to the beach this we'll time of year, you're going to be filled with, you show. You're gonna be filled with <laughs> Canadians. Ah, can I, it will take well, an extra. It'll take an extra 45 minutes to get there because of all the Canadians. Well, it feels tropical to them. I don't blame them. Yeah, if I lived where it was negative 22 all the time, th- yeah, 38 would feel really good. Yeah, well, I want a Canadian right now. He's in the left lane with his right blinker. <laughs> Do I pass or not? <laughs> I have a, I have a cat say his family. Okay. Here, March 9th is the is the date line. March 9th. I think that's the day we were talking about. It, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. A Pennsylvania couple's cat is being hailed as a hero after alerting its owners to a late night fire that started inside the home. How about that? Uh, okay, tell me the rest of it. Was it because the cat couldn't get out either? The, <laughs> no preservation. The, the McKeesport Fire Department said the couple were in bed 1.30 a.m. Friday yeah. when, when their cat alerted them that something was amiss inside their home. Okay. There you go. The cat got, ran into the room. Yeah. And said, get up, get up, get up, get up. I mean, it's, it's great. I'm, I'm proud of the cat. Um, <laughs> Let's be clear. He was like, the only way I can get out is if I wake up these two idiots. So they need to get up. (laughs) All right. I have a a different topic for you today. I was going to ask you to speak your foreign language, the one you speak fluently, the one called sports, (laughs) because there's a sub a sub language that I know even less of. It's the language of brackets. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if oh, this is going to be too okay. hard for me to yeah. understand. And I, I, I clearly informed the audience that this was completely s- selfish on my part because they all know this. And I just don't get this whole thing. What, first of all, okay. first of all, you don't have to explain what it is because I don't want to bore everybody. But why is there a controversy about it this year? There always is. Um, it, it depends on which controversy we're, we're talking about. So every year there are, there are only 64 teams that make the tournament. And out of those 64, half, a little over half are what they call automatic bids. So if you win your conference game, you get into the NCAA tournament. Um, and so that, that's kind of how it works. By the way, I don't count the play-in games as part of the NCAA conference. That's why there's 64. All right, and then this year when they released the brackets and released the matchup, TBS did it, and they were trying to do something new, um, and they released all the teams that made the automatic bids in alphabetical order. It was really weird. So you, you had to really have uh, a lot of information, a lot of knowledge just to say who made it and who didn't, and I didn't particularly like the show either. So that, I guess, is a big controversy. Really? Well, a, a, yeah. uh, a tweet from the Lawrence, P- Lawrence, Kansas Police Department said, please do not call 911 to complain mm-hmm. about the format of the NCAA tournament selection show. We can't do anything about it. <laughs> right. covering, there you covering. go. <laughs> it's because, you know, there are teams that, what they call on the bubble, right? So they're a team that could get in and might not get in. And when you release it via alphabetical order and to top it off, TBS got the alphabetical order wrong. <laughs> oh. up like four times. You know, wow. Up like Nevada or North Carolina State put in Nevada, uh, <laughs> and, and there were just things like that. And people were freaking out, but it, it, it's fine. It starts Thursday. 
Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you, you, when you look at, like, uh, the United States as a production, this is, like, one of our worst weeks of being office productivity. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's, it's fun. <laughs> give everybody who has no idea about sports an opportunity to participate with people who know a lot about sports. <laughs> right, 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 right. It's like throwing darts in the dark, right? It's exactly what it is. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a reason why if you get your, like a perfect bracket and all these, you can get like $50 million because it's, it's almost impossible. <laughs> it's almost impossible. All right, so let me, let me read some of the tweets. Uh, this new Selection Sunday show is garbage. Audio is way off and there is zero drama. Yeah. <laughs> right, and, and the reason that, that people love the drama is because of the way they released the brackets in the past, and they just completely screwed it up. <laughs> it, it's one of the things that people like. It's, okay, who got in? And then they want you to show the video of the teams that got in and the video of the teams that don't. Um, and, and, you know, there are people that make their entire living based off of the selection show and who gets in and who gets out. And I, I really just think they screwed it up. <laughs> All right, so it doesn't change the fact that the same sixty-four teams are in the game. All right, it was a two-hour the, show. Uh, it was a two-hour yeah. show hosted by Ernie Johnson and Greg Gumble, with Charles Barkley. By I'm the way, I'm a big fan of Ernie. I, I think Ernie does an okay job, but. Okay. You know, and then Charles Barkley's over there trying to make. <laughs> so they had a live. They had a live studio audience. And pizza, yes. Pizza Hut was giving pizza to the audience members, and then when Ernie Johnson asked for a slice. And forced the crowd to react. It, it says it was a very awkward staged moment. Did you see this? Yeah, I, I watched the highlights. I, I mean, I, I did. Watch I wonder what happened. I, I, I watched like the first fifteen minutes. Can I have a slice? It's usually really good, and then it, it, I was like, "Oh, this is gonna suck." <laughs> so I, I, I just, I just followed it on Twitter, and you can find it online. Just quickly as you can by watching the TBS show. So that's what I did. So here's another tweet. I'm not sure I understand the live audience. It sounds like only 23 people. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. where was the announcement being made? Was it like in, in a television uh, station? What remember. city? Or? No, it was in some type of a theater. I, I don't remember. I don't oh. Uh, here's another tweet. Good God, this new Selection Sunday format is a nightmare. <laughs> that was bad. It was just a. It was just bad. Um, TBS will learn. I mean, they've got a bunch of the games this year. They've had a bunch of the games in the past. So it, you know, it, it, it'll be fine. So it, it was. Change. So the, the the problem wasn't about the bracket itself. It was about the show revealing who's in the bracket. Correct. Yeah. So yeah. It, well, there's always controversy about who made it and who didn't. But this year, the actual bad show trumped everything. So, yeah. <laughs> well, who picks? Who does the actual selection of who makes it and who doesn't? They have a well. There's some automatic bids, and then there are some at-large bids, and those are selected by the NCAA committee. Oh. And they put all kinds of factors in there, like RPI. And so, are you are you participating or, in in the betting part of this? Um, I'm I'm sure I'll have a bracket or two, of course. Yeah. Uh, or two. Oh, you can so have more than one? Idiot I am. Depends on who asked me. I'm already in two. Um, <laughs> we'll see how many I end up with. So what do you yeah, do? I mean, you, put, you put money on the line? Uh, I mean, I have I have one or two that I might, but uh-huh. it's usually just for bragging rights. <laughs> is it, is it, but a- it all depends on how they score it. If if, you're, if if every win was worth the same or if each... If you get the final four, it's worth more than if you don't. It just depends on how they do What's it, it, whether or not I bet. When when uh, when Buddy and Tom did the show here, I think we Robin and I did it just for the fun of it. And one of the teams we picked only because it was from Wisconsin, and they went on to almost win. I think, right? Didn't they get close to the end? Yeah. So it looked like we knew what we were doing, but we had no clue. We just picked it because it was Robin's state. And that's the beauty. That's the beauty of the NCAA. Sure. <laughs> I mean, and that's why they call it March Madness, and that's that's what people love about it. They love the upset. They love uh, North Carolina losing to a, a team like Gonzaga, who had been in the tournament, or Florida losing to Gonzaga. So it, you know, it's um, it's it's fantastic. I will tell you this: I think the one seeds will make it to the Sweet 16 at least. So history says that. That's after that. Who the heck knows? So how do they choose which um, team 
is pitted up against which team in the first round? It's all it's all slotted based on the committee. I mean, there's a they have a pretty good formula as to how all that's done. So if you're the number one overall seed, they're going to put you as close to home as they possibly can. Oh. And then from there, it all they they rank every team one through sixty four basically. Mm-hmm. And then from there, they start to divide you up. Even though you may be there's four number one seeds, there's really a one, two, three, and four seed, and then the fourth seed, and then the fourth seed is really you know, like the 17th seed. So that, that's kind of how they work. Is there a, a women's uh, team, Final Four? There is, yeah. Yeah, there is a women's NCAA. It's 32 teams. Oh, okay. But we, we don't hear about that because it's not as popular as this one, right? Yeah, nobody watches women's basketball. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they don't. They and, and, don't. And cats don't save lives. <laughs> and here's the thing. And here's why. It's because... There's, there's four teams that win it basically every year, and there once in a while is a Blue Moon team, but UConn is by far and away the most talented team, and they're, they're the number one overall seed, and they're probably going to win it until it gets a little boring. So uh, that's the, a fact, and the competition's just not as good. This is the foreign language part of Galen's talk mm-hmm. right now. I'm just, I'm yeah. saying, I, it's like, it sounds like French to me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it at all. What what was the uh, the story about the Houston Astros? What was that story? Oh, they going to the White House. Yeah. Is that that's yeah. not is that yeah. a big deal at all? Uh, no, every championship team wins. It's just now people boycott it all of a sudden. But yeah. you know it happens. Is, is Trump a baseball fan? <clears throat> Trump, Trump? Who the heck knows? You have to ask him on that given day. <laughs> I, uh, I mean, it, it's. Yeah, you know, I, I don't. I don't know. David That's, David you know, Letterman. David Letterman is a, a baseball fan. He used to. I remember when he was in his prime. I guess he would have the the baseball stars on all the time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now he's got a new yeah, show. They all, well, they always have the they always have the Yankees on if they're good. I mean, that's just because it's easy, but uh, it's true. I mean, that's who Well, are. yeah, okay. You know who, you know who else <laughs> I liked? Uh, Paul Simon was always a baseball fan. I have no team which, I have no idea which team he supported. Oh, okay. Yankee, the Yankees fan. He, he was the Yankees, Yankees fan, too? Well, Jimmy McCauley's <laughs> a Mets fan. You know who we have? You know who we have? Who? We have, we have uh, maybe the greatest fiction writer of all time, it's Stephen King. Huge Red Sox fan. Oh, really? Hey, we have James Taylor. James Taylor. James wow. Taylor. Turned 70 today, by the way. Yeah, James wow. Taylor's a Red Sox fan. I think... in, I'm wondering if in his mind is already in Carolina. <laughs> 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 I think so. Uh, all right. Hey, you know what I was thinking about? We were talking about the theme park, uh, the, the Disney stuff that's expanding again. Um, and I was thinking about the one, the boardwalk and baseball. I... Like, I, like a, you know, I, I make it no no secret that I'm not a big sports fan, but I used to love that park. It yeah, was, it was it, wonderful. You know, it, it had that uh, that Americana feel to it. Do you remember it, or was it? Did you not really sure. get to go? Yeah, went there. Sure. And th- did it become Circus World after that? I think, or was it the other way no, around? No, wasn't it Circus it, World? It was first. first. Circus World first. Yeah, Circus World yeah. was first, and then it became Boardwalk and Baseball. Boardwalk and Baseball was really fun, though. Because mm-hmm. yeah. I, I don't remember you know, the, the big issue with the the big issue with the boardwalk and baseball is they had a really tough time monetizing. You know, I mean, if you if you think about Disney, they they try to make a certain amount of money for every square foot of property they own, right? Think Disney Springs, how that's constantly revamping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get more money out of you, um, and and that that was a problem with boardwalk and baseball. Really? So they really had a hard time monetizing it. You may, is it because of the licensing of the of the the the, 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 uh, the team names and all that? I think so. I think that was a piece of it. But, um, you know, ABC already had a relationship with MLB, uh, with the Major League Baseball, so it made it easier. But it just became a money-making venture. So that that's that's the biggest issue. That's well, that's. That's so. But that's, that's why a, Disney's going to Star Wars with all Tomorrowland. Yeah, Tomorrowland is you know. Um, yeah, yesterday, you know, Land. We, we were talking in the office mm-hmm. about uh, yeah, they were, we were talking about Space Mountain going away, and I'm like, it's hard to imagine uh, Disney World without Space Mountain. Yeah, yeah. And I think they'll just re- reboot it in some form or fashion around Star Wars, but that's all of the because think about all the merchandise you can sell at Star Wars <laughs> Land compared to 
Tomorrowland. Ah, good point. You know, every, good point, yeah. Every souvenir in the world, every drink's going to have a Yoda. <laughs> You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. That, that's what it comes down to. A Yoda soda. That's really what it comes down to. <laughs> and uh, we sure. passed uh, Tomorrowland. I mean, Tomorrowland was Tomorrowland way back when, when they first now opened. But now it's, it's yesterday land. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, it's sad. It's, you know, technology has surpassed what Disney created well, have, all those decades ago. They could have the Elon Musk ride. <laughs> oh, they could. That would be great. That'd be perfect for think, Space Mountain. I, I, I'm going to be honest. I think Elon Musk is one of the most overrated individuals on Earth right now. You know, all he does is just run government, you know, basically scams on how he can get more tax breaks <laughs> and more, <laughs> more money for the federal government. Hey, and then I... So, it's a social system. I think it's... I think it's... pay for anything. I think his plan to have people on Mars is, is, is cruel. Because you're going to send people to Mars, and they're not going to have anybody to play with. They, no, this, no, you can't say it's you can't say it's cruel because all these people are willing to go. So what's the government right? going to be? They want to go. What, what government? Oh, the government are going to they're going to offset the cost. They they do with no, 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 no. That's has. not what I mean. I mean, if you land people on Mars, what laws will apply to them? To those people living up Who there? Who? Who cares? Who cares? Who cares? Who cares? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Two of them. Right. <laughs> right. So somebody gets mad at somebody else, like Abel and Cain, and boom, half the population is dead. <laughs> That's right. Okay. And and by the time we get there, it won't matter. It's going to take us what five years to get there or something. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Who cares? I don't know. <laughs> Those people. I, that, that's a sad thing. Yeah. I'm going to go to Mars, honey. I'll no, never I mean, be back. But Elon Musk <laughs> is going to take care of on, you. Just think, they're going to be on so many postage stamps. You know, and have statues and oh, monuments big deal. made after Yeah, but their life is done. They're oh, man, that's all, but, but that's all they care about. Mm -hmm. They want to be the first person to ever be on Mars. That's more important to them than if somebody kills them. <laughs> so, honestly, if you said, look, you're going to be on Mars, you're going to live there for a while, and then somebody's going to kill you. I'm like, oh, okay, I'll, I'll do that. They're going to die there anyway. Yeah, there you go. It's just a matter of time. Back. Oh, how, no, how are they going to get back? They're not going to have enough fuel to get back. So the John 3.16 says, so God so lo for God so loved the world so much that he gave what is only begotten son. Begotten son. Thank you. The word world. If you die on Mars, you're not included in on this whole salvation thing, are you? I mean, he so loved the world. He didn't love Mars. Yeah. Well, the, the world is a relative term. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah, breathing into it, so yeah, he still is, he still he made Mars. <laughs> but it also says he created the heavens and earth. Heavens are plural, so there's got to be other. There's another one. Other other things out there than just oh, our listen. solar system, than just our Earth. Heavens. <laughs> Boy, we went out of plural. We went out of tangent. There's no there. life there. No. <laughs> yeah. No, no. What do you do on Easter Sunday on Mars? <laughs> where, where do you go? There's no IHOP. There's no IHOP. <laughs> <laughs> you just you just pull out your Bible. You're good. Oh, yeah. you Think about that. sports on Mars. What? Right? The gravity is right. Well, you have to be in a controlled well, environment, can. right? Yeah, but you can't fix you gravity. Can't Mars is. Uh, let's see. I don't know. I don't know. It's three. I, think, I mean, yes, they have gravity. I mean, it's just not very much. <laughs> right, right, right. It's, it's more than the moon, than the moon though, it's more right? Than the moon, it's just not much. Yeah, a person who a person who weighs 100 grams on Earth weighs 38 grams uh, kilograms on Mars. There you go. 38 percent. 38 percent. There you yeah. go. Women will be up there in you, droves. You can hit that baseball far. <laughs> <laughs> you can put a baseball. Well, on. except base suit. Uh, you know, it's it's fine. Now you understand that it, it, this isn't probably going to happen for at least the next 10 years, maybe 20. That's that's not so. too far away. Mm -mm. I remember 20 years nope. ago. I had an 11-year-old son 20 years ago. A lot will change. <laughs> yeah, but a lot will change between now and then. Yeah. Elon's got to sell. I mean, what? He, Elon. His, by the way, his, <laughs> his, whatever, however he calls himself, his whole Tesla cars is nothing but a pyramid scheme. <laughs> when you look at the financial side of it, no, I have the no federal problem. government decides to say, all right, we're no longer going to give you these huge subsidy in the form of a tax break for this car, nobody's going to buy it. Because a car will cost like eighty thousand dollars, and it's not it's not worth that. Hmm. But because of the tax subsidies and things like that on both his plants and everything he manufactures, that's that's why it becomes. We saw one. We saw one at, one at the point, car show. Gonna, mm -hmm. uh, they're all over the place. They're, they're 
but they're still back ordered something like fifty thousand. That's why his stock keeps plummeting. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, we need to uh, do, get, get, do the business end of this deal. How is the blood supply right now? Oh, uh, we're we're still in need of type O. Here we are, it's spring break, um, and weather is coming, and uh, we need people to get out there and get the get supply to donate blood. And where's the blood mobile today? Hey, hey, today we're at the Walmart Bahia, and we're also out at Summer Glen. Oh, nice, excellent. All right, uh, for the Walmart in the billet, in the uh, shores, and uh, then Summer Glen. Excellent. Galen's daily announcement to remind us to donate blood and save lives is made possible by two great sponsors, Palm Garden of Ocala Health and Rehabilitation Center. Go take a tour, see why we recommend them every single day. 2700 Southwest 34th Street is the address. Their website, palmgardenofocala.com. Their phone number, 854-6262. And Pan Flooring, thank you. Also, they're at 1201 Southwest 17th Street. Their phone number, 351-3420. See how they can make your home or office more beautiful from the floor up. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Galen, thank you for what you do, and uh, be careful out there. Hey, no problem. Thank you guys for everything. I appreciate it. We'll be right back. Well, hello there. Danny Boy here, and I've been suffering from some bad luck lately. I've been sick and weak, and I've even been falling, don't you know? But now I've got the luck of the Irish. I'm choosing Palm Garden for my rehab. I may not find a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, but I'm lucky to be getting my health back with a wee bit of help from Palm Garden, what gets me home fast, really, really fast. Visit Palm Garden, located at the corner of Southwest 27th Avenue and 34th Street, right here in Ocala, don't you know? Foster. President Trump's plan to prevent school shootings includes calling on states to temporarily take guns away from people who might be dangerous and setting up a commission to study the issue 